Sabrina. Hi, Jen. All right, we'll take you back to prices right in just a bit. But first, Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson is at the state capitol right now where he's discussing the expiration of the current COVID-19 state of emergency in Arkansas. Let's listen in. To do. Uh, our hospitalizations are down. Uh, our every, every adult in Arkansas, in fact, 12 plus years of age, uh, have access to vaccines that we did not have access before. Everyone knows what to do. It is not an emergency. It is a maintenance of effort in terms of our vaccines and managing the pandemic. <clears throat> My emergency orders uh, from telemedicine and liability protection have been enacted into law. So there's not any emergency orders that are dependent upon the public emergency continuing. It is important to understand that we are still in a pandemic. The fact that I am uh, ending the declaration of a public health emergency does not change the fact that we still have the COVID-19 virus in our community. It does not change the fact that our public health system has to continue to deal with it. It doesn't change the fact that we need to continue to get vaccinations out. We can do this in terms of a long-term maintenance of effort, and uh, it is not necessary to have the emergency declaration to carry out this public health responsibility. The public health concerns remain, and everyone in Arkansas needs to continue to take the virus seriously and to act accordingly. And the fact that I'm ending the public health emergency should not diminish anyone's intensity on the need to get a vaccination or uh, the need to protect uh, the, from uh, the virus that is still remaining in parts of our communities. We are in a vaccination campaign and that is our focus and it will remain our focus. Today I'm pleased to announce that we have a $6.4 million ad campaign for this calendar year uh, to encourage the public to get vaccinations. In addition to that $6.4 million, we are spending another $2 million for a minority ad campaign that is targeting particular groups with specific messages. I did want to play uh, two of the ads that will be played in this uh, ad campaign that's currently undergoing. And the first one, uh, you should be able to recognize uh, a rather famous Arkansan. Hello, my name is Sidney Moncrief. I've taken over 10,000 shots during my career. And one of them is the COVID-19 vaccine. It's safe, it's effective, and it will allow us to return back to normal. Let's vaccinate Arkansas so we can all get back in the game. It's the easiest shot you will ever take. Save lives, get your vaccination. Learn more at healthy.arkansas.gov. Sydney still has a good form in his shot. And then uh, the next, next ad, you probably haven't seen, uh, it's a regional ad that I think is very effective. And let's play this. As a business owner, I think it's important to get vaccinated for people to feel comfortable to come in, for our employees to feel comfortable. I decided to take the vaccine because of my health and everybody else's health in the community. I've been vaccinated, I've had both my shots and I feel comfortable now. Well, it just, it just helps everybody. If everybody take it, then nobody has to worry about nothing. You just go on and do your business. Save lives. Get your vaccination. Learn more at healthy.arkansas.gov. Those are called influencers. Uh, those that uh, the public hopefully identifies with, uh, but also uh, gives confidence of those small businesses that uh, they're protecting their workplace and the importance of their employees and the public uh, being vaccinated is an important message, and I applaud the uh, Department of Health and our ad team for uh, uh, development of that uh, campaign. And as you can see, uh, that last ad talked about uh, the workplace, and that brings me to the third announcement today, and that is uh, I'm pleased to announce that we're going to give a $100 bonus for executive branch state agency employees who have received at least one COVID-19 vaccination. Now, 
when I say it's $100, that's net to them, so it's really going to be a $200 uh, bonus, but with the holding taxes, we wanted them to get at least $100 in their hand. And so it will be $100 uh, cash uh, check to uh, the executive branch state agency employees who get at least one uh, COVID-19 vaccination. This will include 25,772 employees. And if we uh, achieve a 70% vaccination rate, it will cost about $3.6 million. Uh, this uh, will be uh, uh, absorbed by our agencies uh, in their ordinary uh, budget uh, and personnel costs. Uh, we do want to get this reimbursed by American Rescue Plan funds, and so that will be the plan to have this covered in the long term. Uh, if they have their uh, vaccination and they uh, can show that, uh, then this uh, check would be issued after July 1. That gives us time to tabulate and get uh, everybody uh, on board with the vaccination, and it'll also be in the next fiscal year uh, that we can uh, issue those checks. The reason we're doing this is that we want uh, employees to be vaccinated, and we want them to be safe in the workplace, but just as importantly, our state workers in many instances are providing an environment for the public to come in and do business. And we want the public to know that uh, the workplace, we're doing everything we can to make it safe and to have the employees that are vaccinated, uh, and uh, this is an important step for our employees. Right now, we have 43.7% of our state agency employees that are already vaccinated. Uh, and so obviously that's not where we want it to be. We want it to be higher. Uh, we want it to get up to the 70% range. Uh, we want to reach uh, the uh, president's goal of 50%, uh, uh, my goal of 50% of uh, all our Kansans vaccinated, his goal of 70% of adults uh, being vaccinated. And so we're working on those go goals and this will help us to get there. Uh, contract employees are not eligible. And again, this is for executive branch uh, agency uh, employees, but we have talked to some of the independent agencies. They like the idea, so I'm hopeful that uh, many other uh, of the different uh, departments and and uh, employers and state government will embrace this as well uh, to really enhance the opportunity for and, in, and incentives for uh, our workers to get vaccinated. And so with that, uh, I'm happy to turn it open to any questions you might have. The decision on the uh, emergency order, uh, the fact that you would have had to get a legislative approval to, to extend it, did that factor into your decision at all? And without this order, uh, in place, what tools do you, if you have, if you have, if things turn around, if we start seeing hospitalizations go up in other areas? No, my decision is based upon uh, what I see as happening in the state of Arkansas and that we're in a maintenance of effort, we're in a vaccination program. Uh, I don't need uh, executive uh, emergency powers right now to accomplish that. Uh, if it changes, uh, I have the option of uh, renewing the uh, emergency order, and uh, I've thought that through. And obviously, if if we have a if we don't get the vaccinations out, if we have a uh, a, a resurge of this uh, uh, COVID-19 in the fall, uh, and we have to have emergency measures in place, we can always reinstitute the emergency if need be. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm hopeful that we won't be there. Uh, and I'd like to think that we're not going to have that surge if everybody in Arkansas does what is needed, uh, get the vaccine if, uh, if, if you're in a situation to get that. Does that have any effect on the National Guard deployment? And uh, is there anything else that will change as a result of not having the emergency? Uh, not in terms of the National Guard deployment. Uh, because, uh, you know, I can deploy them as need be based upon uh, my role as commander in chief uh, of the state military. Uh, there, if you remember, uh, whenever I asked for the last extension of the uh, emergency, I referenced SNAP benefits. 
uh, that would be in jeopardy uh, uh, if the emergency is not continued. Uh, and so uh, those are supplemental SNAP benefits that apply during emergency. Those right now are set to expire in June, I believe, late June. And uh, we'll be working with uh, uh, HHS out of Washington uh, to see if we can qualify for that or whether there's American Rescue Plans uh, funds that might be needed to supplement that. Uh, but I did not want that to stand in the way with the other resources we have in ending that emergency. Have you kicked around any ideas on how to incentivize the general public? Uh, obviously, some other states are kind of really going outside the box with basically, you know, vaccine lotteries. Uh, has there anything been bantied about in your office? Uh, the answer is absolutely yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, we're still studying that. I don't want to get ahead of the game, but uh, uh, this is one thing that I can do uh, with uh, the funding that we have in place for uh, incentivizing state employees. I know that employees in the private sector, employers in the private sector are incentivizing their employees in a similar fashion. And so uh, this is consistent with what we want employers to do, encourage vaccinations, incentivize when it's possible. Um, you know, in terms of uh, the general public, uh, uh, we're, we're, we'll continue to look at that. There's uh, one, our, we don't have our American Rescue uh, Plan funds in place yet, or the plan for distribution. There's a number of steps to go through, and we have some very uh, strict uh, guidelines in reference to things like lotteries uh, that uh, are a little bit more challenging than perhaps in other states. but. Uh, we would like to have some programs that people get excited about that will draw attention to the need and also uh, proper encouragement. Uh, what are you hoping that the public thinks when they watch these two ads? Uh, one, that it's a positive uh, thought that goes through their mind about vaccines and saying that if City Moncrief thinks it's good, it ought to be good. Uh, if uh, the business owners, and, and I identify with, with each one of those uh, employers. I've been in many of those uh, places of business, and I think that the public will see that as, as cool, uh, as a reaffirming message, and a common sense citizen that says, let's get the vaccine. And so I think they'll, that they will think of it as a real encouragement. Is that dependent upon proof of inoculation? Uh, that's correct. We'll still work through that, and, and the uh, agency director will be able to determine, but each employee uh, will have a, a vaccination card that they can go in and submit uh, you know, their proof of vaccination and qualify them for uh, the uh, bonus, and it is retroactive. And so uh, if you've already received the, uh, your vaccination shot, you still qualify for that bonus because you already have done the right thing. But if you have it, you go get it, you show proof of your vaccination, and then the HR uh, team will be able to put you in line uh, for that bonus payment. Be approved by the legislature. I'm sorry? The bonus is need legislative approval. Uh, the answer is no, because they, we already have the appropriations for it, and it's uh, 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 something that we can uh, do within our existing budget. Again, if we ask for uh, American Rescue Plan funds, then yes, the legislature will have to approve the reimbursement of the uh, American Rescue Plan funds, but it will not uh, slow down us uh, implementing uh, that uh, tool uh, for our workers. Not a non-COVID question for you on the, the I-40 bridge. Uh, the uh, there have been additional photos that have surfaced from 2016 that appear to show the, the crack, the, the crack on, the, on the bridge. Uh, given the fact that it was missed 2019-2020, are you concerned about the possibility that it may have existed even, even longer than that? And what, do you, what else do you think needs to be looked at with the program? Uh, Director Tudor would have to address uh, any previous inspections or uh, thoughts that it might have existed prior to 2019. Uh, but as I've said, uh, uh, you know, from a public standpoint, uh, the public 
uh, should be reassured of the fact that uh, it was caught in an inspection, and secondly, the time that it was not caught in an inspection and discovered that there was disciplinary action taken uh, very quickly uh, and processes were changed to make sure those uh, inspections are uh, redundant and that uh, they're examined in the right way uh, and we will not miss that in the future. And so I applaud Director Tudor for how she has handled that. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to comment at all on the lawsuit that's been filed over some of um, the laws that passed this session related to voting and elections? Uh, I haven't seen the uh, lawsuits yet, uh, uh, so we'll just have to uh, see how those develop. Uh, there's not a surprise that lawsuits are filed uh, after uh, some of the controversial bills that were passed. Uh, you know, we expect them on some of the abortion-related bills, uh, probably some of the transgender bills. We expect lawsuits on uh, the voting uh, uh, changes that were made. Uh, I looked at those carefully, and it looks like they would pass constitutional muster to me. Uh, but we'll just wait and see how uh, uh, the lawsuits develop, and I'll look at those and perhaps have more comments after I read them. Uh, off Andrew here, uh, do you have any concerns now that you know with the I-40 bridge being egregiously missed uh, about any bridges throughout the state, and then I guess too also kind of how that department in general is is run considering something as egregious as that crack in I-40 was, was missed? Well, again, Director Tudor has addressed that, and uh, uh, I think she's taken exactly the, the same, the right approach to it. Uh, and I think what it speaks to in terms of the public is, thank goodness uh, the public passed issue one which gives us uh, uh, more state funds that are needed to uh, do inspections, to do repair work, and to assure the safety of our highways and bridges. And so it illustrates the fact that uh, uh, that was a wise investment of uh, our dollars here in Arkansas, and we needed issue one, and it's going to uh, make a big difference in safety. And, it, and this, what we see with the I-40 bridge illustrates that. Your office announced yesterday that I think Kevin Case was appointed to the Medical Marijuana Commission. Can you say a little bit about why he was selected and what he brings to the commission? Uh, uh, Kevin has uh, uh, served the state in, in different capacities. Uh, I've known him. He's uh, familiar with the regulatory environment as a business owner. And uh, whenever you look at uh, the Marijuana Commission, I needed someone with an understanding of regulatory process, uh, but the small business understands the private sector side as well. And uh, I thought he's a great choice for that. And it's, it's not an easy job. And uh, so I'm just grateful that uh, Kevin's willing to serve in that capacity, and I know he'll do a great job. Y'all are terrific today. Thank you for your time and uh, for your attention to these announcements.